Hello everyone, and welcome to this month's Connect with Control M. Today we're going to be discussing workload archiving. My name is Joel Brecker, and I am a technical support analyst with BMC Software. I support Control M products for distributed systems in the US, and I'm located in the Houston office. So how many of you have wanted to look at data from more than two months ago, but could not? Today we're going to show you how workload archiving can help with this. So let's start off by looking at today's agenda. We're going to look at the product architecture. We're going to discuss how you can benefit from workload archiving in your environment. And then we're going to look at some considerations when installing workload archiving. And then I'll do a brief demonstration of its practical use. We'll also look at some workload archiving commands. But before we go any further, I'd like to introduce today's panelists. We have with us Ian Warner and Ted Levitt from Support. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A panel. If you can put all your questions to all panelists, we'll aim to cover them at the end of this session. Also, you can save the presentation by going to File and Save. So how does workload archiving work? As you can see from this diagram, workload archiving is a separate application with its own database, and it should also have its own machine. The workload archiving server communicates with the enterprise manager using the GUI server. It uses this connection to collect logs from your Control-M server database and also the output from your agents. It also uses this connection when you want to see information that's been archived using the GUI client. Using workload archiving, you can accommodate all of your users' special requirements for data retention. You can specify how long the logs are kept. Also, using workload archiving is going to save you space on your Control-M server database, as well as on your agents, you'll save disk space. The average output size on the agent is 10 kilobytes, and the average log size is 5 kilobytes on your Control-M server. So while we're talking about these sizes, let's take a look at some examples. If you consider that um, each of your executions per department they can be pretty large. Let's look at these two. We've got HR. They want to keep their jobs for a year, and they have 100 executions a day. At an average of 10 kilobytes per job on your agent, you're looking at 365 megabytes per year that would need to be stored on an agent. For your Control-M server, your database would have to store 182 megabytes per year as an average. So let's look at payroll. If they have a thousand job executions a day and they only want to keep theirs for six months, you're looking at over one gig per six months for your agent disk space. And for your Control M server database, 879 megabytes per six months. Now these are just averages, but you can see just for two departments that your agent disk space would be required to be two gigs, and then your Control M server database would need to store one gig of information. So you might be asking, why do I need workload archiving? So what happens if you have a billing department that wants to keep their data for two years? Maybe HR wants a one-year retention plan. Payroll might be thinking about keeping theirs for six months. And shipping, maybe they decide two months. Can all of your departments see information for jobs that ran last quarter? Was the job successful? Did it fail? Can they see output? Can they see the logs? And how much space would you require on your Control-M server database? How about your agents? How much space would you require to accommodate all these departments? Using workload archiving, you can set up policies for each of these departments. So your billing department, they could keep their data for two years. HR can keep theirs for six months, payroll a year. And even shipping can do uh, their data, their logs and output for two months. So the benefits here is that everyone can have their own retention policies and your database size for your Control-M server shrinks and you don't require as much agent disk space. And since everything is located in one centralized database, this makes data retrieval quick and easy. So what do you need to consider when you're installing workload archiving? The first thing we need to consider is that when you're installing workload archiving onto a Windows machine, 
is going to be required to install Point Patch 1. Also, where should you install workload archiving? We recommend a dedicated machine. This ensures that there is no performance impact for other Control-M components. You might also be asking yourself, well, how much space should I need to uh, allocate for workload archiving? Each environment is different, but we recommend a minimum of 20 gigabytes. Also, we've just released workload archiving version 9. You might be asking, is there any special considerations for that? Workload archiving version 9, the installation is a little bit different from version 8. The first thing you're going to do is install a distributed instance of Control-M Enterprise Manager server, and then you're going to install workload archiving onto that same machine. Workload Archiving 9 does this, has to have this procedure because Control-M Enterprise Manager Server is what it uses to build its database. You'll also want to back up your Workload Archiving database. And this procedure is the same as the backup process for your Enterprise Manager database. And we recommend setting up the hot backup. So how would you install Workload Archiving on your environment? The first thing you're going to do is you're going to download Workload Archiving from the EPD site. And then during your installation, you're going to have a choice of database size and which Control-M Enterprise Manager server to connect to. You'll also specify the GUI server and the port. For mainframe, you'll want to set up your ARC user in your RACF system using the similar permissions as you did for your GC serve user. But at a minimum, we need to remember that this ARC user needs to have permission to view logs and sysouts. So let's take a minute here and let's uh, demonstrate how you can use workload archiving in your environment. So we might have in our environments several different departments. And each of these departments may want to save their information for varying amounts of time. In our, in our uh, environment, we have a billing department. They want to keep their data for two years. We have payroll. They want to have it for six months. Shipping, they want to do their job logs and output for two months. And HR, we need to set them up. They want to keep theirs for one year. So what we need to do after we've installed workload archiving is we need to configure this add-on so that we can accommodate all these retention plans. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our Control-M Configuration Manager. We're going to go to Tools. We're going to go to Workload Archiving. As you'll notice, when you open up Workload Archiving Configuration, you're going to see the Archive Policies displayed first. But before we can do anything with these Archive Policies, we need to configure the Workload Archiving add-on. So we'll go to the Advanced Configuration, and we need to set up the minimum free disk space required for the archiving server to archive. By default, this is 512 megabytes, and you could increase this um, depending on your environment. But we recommend not going any lower than 512 megabytes. Also, we need to check, we need to set up the interval to check for free disk space. By default, this is 60 minutes, but depending on your environment and how many executions you have, you may want to adjust this. We also need to define a cleanup cycle. Now, the data cleanup cycle by default is one day at 7 AM. And this is how often it's going to clean up the data that exceeds the retention plan. So if you have information or policies that are set up to store your data for a year, anything that exceeds that retention policy is going to be removed from the database on a daily basis. So now that we have all these set up, uh, one last thing before we leave this panel, I do want to mention that uh, this uh, 512 megabytes, the, re the minimum disk space, once you reach this value, you will get an X alert to let you know that you're at your minimum. So let's go to the archive policies now. The first thing we want to look at here is a maximum output size. Now any of your output that exceeds this value is not going to be archived. So we need to pick an average that's uh, going to accommodate all of our output. So let's look here. We have payroll set up already for six months. We have our billing department. They've been set up for two years. We have shipping. They've been set up for their two months. But as you notice, we don't have an HR set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the HR together. 
We're going to save their output for a year. So first thing we want to do is we want to set up their the name for their plan. We'll just call it HR. We need to make sure the status is set to active. And you have an option of, of turning off a policy and setting it to inactive. We'll set a brief description here. Okay. And then we're going to set the retention period. So here they want to save theirs for one year. And you have different options here. If you just need uh, small retention plans, you can do days, months. But we're doing, a, we're doing one year. They want to do log and output. And as you can see here, you can choose just either or or both. And we're going to choose both. Now when you set up the actual rule, archiving rule parameters, in the criteria field, you can do pattern matching. What we can do here is we can enter an asterisk. If we have a big environment and we want to do all of our Control M servers, and we want to look for this HR, these HR jobs on all of our servers. And if we have a big environment and we want to exclude certain servers, we can come over here and we can type in a list of servers that we want to exclude from our list. We choose the type of environment we're working in. We have distributed, we have ZOS, and we have all. We're in a distributed, so we're going to leave this distributed. We have job statuses. You can choose to only save things that have ended OK. You can do ended not OK or all. In our case, we're going to save all. And the same thing here with pattern matching. It allows it. And with the exceptions, the same thing. You, if you have a bunch of applications that you and you want to collect everything except for particular uh, applications, you can enter that list in in the exceptions. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter in the name of our HR uh, application here. You can also do a sub-application or even by folder. So it allows some uh, very, uh, very large versatility here. So we're going to hit OK. And in order for this policy to be enabled, we have to save this panel. So we're going to save it. And the thing to remember here is that we've set up this HR policy now. It's going to start collecting data from this day forward. And anything that's on our Control-M servers today and our agents today is going to be archived. So if we have our Control-M server set to store three days and our agents to store three days, those three days are going to get archived. Anything beyond that point will not be in our archived, uh, our archived database. So these things that we have here that have already been running, they've been collecting data. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the statistics panel. This panel is going to come in very handy when you're setting up your environment because you can see each of your policies and how much space is being used by them. And you can also see a total number of executions, total number of or total data size here. And then you can see the database size. As you can see, there is some compression involved here. And it will also show you the amount of disk space that's being used. So let's go to the Enterprise Manager. And we're going to field a call from the shipping department. They're curious about a job that ran on July 15th. And they want to make sure that it ran. And they want to see some information from that job. The first thing we're going to notice is that we're, when we open up our Enterprise Manager and we go to the History panel to search for our information, is that the archived viewpoints, they're only storing the previous day. So this isn't going to help us here. What we need to do is we need to search the archived database for the information that the shipping department's looking for. To do this, we're going to click on the Archive Search. This button will be here when you have Workload Archiving installed. By clicking here, it opens up the Archive Search panel. We're going to click on Advanced. And as you can see here, we can search on many different items from our jobs. If we know about some of the output or log contents, we can search on that. Uh, we can also search on things just on one of our Control-M servers. Um, it gives you a list here. Same thing with applications and folders sub-application. On mainframe, you can do libraries. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to type in the name of the job that the shipping department is interested in. And this job is, was meant to check the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose between dates so we can choose just July 15th. So we'll go back July 15th. We'll choose the same thing for the two. All right. And so now we'll do a search. And as you can see, it's pulled up our job. Because there is compression involved, the data is going to stay compressed until we actually view it. And we're viewing this data from the archiving server. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this job. As you can see, there's some statistics here on the general pa pane panel. Then you go to the log. You can see we have the log here. And we also have the output. Now, in order to get this information to the shipping department, we're going to save this to our desktop. And you can save it anywhere that uh, you have access to. And we'll save our output as well. And then as you can see, we have our files here. And we can send these by email or uh, however we like to the uh, shipping department so they can see the information about the job they were interested in. So now we're going to go back to our presentation. And we're going to look at some of the common commands that you can use with workload archiving. To easily see if your workload archiving server is archiving, you'll use the arc server state command. And this will return a simple server is up or server is down when you run this. It's also possible to test the connection to the enterprise manager and see which, ones you're connect, which one you are connected to by using the arc test configuration command. And when you've initially installed workload archiving, it'll be in a down state, the server will. So what you need to do is use the arc start server command to start the server so it can begin archiving. And then there might be times when you need to stop the workload archiving server. And for this, you'll use the arc stop server command. So we would like to thank you for attending today. We hope that this information we provided was useful. Uh, you'll be receiving a survey as you close the webinar. And we encourage you to fill it out and provide feedback so we can know where we can improve on future topics you'd like to see also. And you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You can also see some of our past webinars on the BMC communities, YouTube and iTunes. Today's webinar will be there as well in a, a couple of days. 